Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today it's kind of a sad day. Today marks the end, really, of official support of DSM 6.2 by Synology. Now, this isn't really going to impact a lot of users. Let's be realistic. The majority of Synology users that have jumped on the bandwagon in the last five years, maybe six, maybe close to seven years or so, are all going to be running DSM 7, 7.1 and 7.2 and the latest revision of 7.2.2. DSM 6.2 is not new. However, there are still users still running it. I know several users personally. Hell, one of the systems in my arrangement is a DSM 6.2 system. We've got a few Synology NASs on site and remote, and DSM 6.2 is on one of them. And I know I'm not alone in this. This video, I'm not making to criticize Synology. I'm a realist. I understand that operating systems can only be supported for a finite amount of time on a platform that predominantly is pay once and most of their users never pay again within that single system. I get it. There has to be an effective service and support with security update life. I get it. But there are still a lot of users out there that are running the software and need to know one, we've already done a video ages and ages ago about DSM 6.2 and DSM 7, showing you what you were going to lose and gain in that, and I'll link to it in the description. But more importantly, here is kind of what DSM 6.2 kind of had before things changed. Firstly, the Premier Photo applications. We always loved them. DSM's um, Photo Station and Synology uh, moments. This was two parallel running applications. One felt a little bit more home AI photo recognition early doors. It had subject and facial recognition, subject recognition, something that disappeared for a long time in Synology Photos. On top of that, you had a Photo Station, which are a lot more customizable to photo um, photographers who want to just kind of share their work. A lot of customization and back end stuff, as well as realistically support of things like HEVC as well. Something that has become something of a sore point in discussion around Synology users that are utilizing their systems predominantly for multimedia and harnessing their hardware to enjoy it while streaming remotely. The transition from DSM 6.2 into DSM 7 and 7.1 and 7.2 also brought with it big changes in terms of support and compatibility of third-party hard, uh, third hardware components. Now, there's going to be users out there that go, if you're running a DSM 6.2 system, you were long out of warranty a million years ago anyway, and you're absolutely right. As I say, this video doesn't serve as a stick to beat Synology with on the um, easing out an EOL of DSM 6.2 uh, there, but it is worth highlighting the compatibility of hard drive, compatibility of third-party components, was broader on DSM 6.2 than it was on DSM 7. It was one of the main sticking point reasons for a lot of users not making the jump over DSM 7 all these years later. One of the more important ones being USB support. USB support has slowly declined with each iteration of DSM post DSM 6.2 and a lot of users still use USB connected adapters in their Synology NAS system. Again, whether that was digital TV tuners, whether that was network adapters, this has slowly been cut down and removed. Indeed, when you go to compatibility listings on Synology's site, USB support, it's largely EOL across all of the compatibility listings. Also, keep in mind that if you are going to stick with DSM 6.2 and you're going to take your system offline, number one, the, the end of DSM 6.2's official support is not the end of that platform. You can continue using it. The apps are still available in the download set. You can go over to their download center, find your system, select the DSM 6.2 moniker, and the downloads are there. But we have already seen Synology retire a whole bunch of DSMs from their download center. So it wouldn't surprise me if we're sort of seeing the end of some of this and potentially the end of DSM 6.2 downloads. The point I'm making is that there are key applications and an operating system, um, a dot .pat complete OS for your system that you want to make sure you've plugged to one side. I'd maybe head over to those download pages in the near future and have those SPK files all ready and popped to one side and dot .pat full operating system files there to one side because you may need them if Synology retire those listings. Finally, to Synology's credit, they've not been secretive about this. They announced that support of DSM 6.2 was going to end. They, you know, right at the start of the year, I believe it was even the tail end of 2023, they even put DSM 6.2 on extended support. This is the end of the extended support period. So again, I'm not really bashing them for retiring this software, and they've given people significant notice. Indeed, they have said that support after this date will be more limited. They haven't said it is over. So that doesn't mean if you've got a software issue that 
doesn't form, at least intellectually, or at least your personal feelings, that are part of a lifetime support warranty, there isn't a definitive, no, we won't talk about it from Synology there, which I think is very positive indeed. That said, if you are running 2011 and 2012 generation devices, this is the end of the road for you, I'm afraid. This is something we've seen on previous iterations of Synology NASes as they've reached the end of their support, uh, support lives, but it's worth highlighting DSM 6.2 was significant. So if you are running one of the many uh, 2011 and 2012 generation devices, again, this is it. Now, keep in mind, a lot of you are going to be going, 2012, that was 14, 12, 13 years ago. What's wrong with you? And you're right, some of these devices were released prior to that. But keep in mind, that after that point, when a device is launched, it doesn't see an upgrade for two years. So 2012 generation devices may well have still been a pre-refresh, a front-runner device from Synology up until 2014, when a refresh would have occurred. And the older generation device would still have been available for sale. So chances are, there are devices from 2011 or 12 that were still being purchased in 2015 or maybe even 2016. So the distance isn't as long as you think. But again, many of those devices Although it's the end of the road for them, there are still devices in the 13 to 15 generation devices which still support DSM-7 and 7.1. And everything after those have all got access to DSM-7.2. So Synology have really kept this going as long as they believe it's possible. And again, this isn't a video about hitting them with a stick here. I believe in service support having a defining lifetime based on a model of buying a device that you don't have to keep subscribing to. But nevertheless, losing DSM 6.2 is going to be a bit of pill for some of you, and therefore I thought we should talk about it here on the channel. Also keep in mind there is a handful of third-party components and third-party applications which are no longer available after the end of DSM 6.2. Hopefully they're available there on screen. Some of them, like Doku Wiki, are rather niche, but some of the uh, insert and plug in there are actually quite useful. So again, depending on your DSM 6.2 setup, if you are someone watching this video that's had a Synology in a back cupboard somewhere for a million years, look out, you may be running DSM 6.2 and as it leaves its service support life, there's always the potential of attack vectors and issues opening up on that particular kernel of Linux, on that particular platform of Synology, on those particular version APKs that could leave you susceptible. So if you are running a system with DSM 6.2, do what I'm going to do and take it offline. If you do want to enjoy using it, because DSM 6.2 still has something of a niche charm in my opinion. Um, if you're going to keep it, take it offline. But this has been the end of DSM 6.2. Fair play to your Synology. You kept it going as long as you did, and I respect you for it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching. There's an article linked as well below going into more detail, listing individual devices and which ones Synology have recommended you update. But apart from that, we'll see you next time.